But you're allowed to be stupid. Who the hell is is sit around to tell you're not going to be stupid? Your mother. That's it. Your mother can tell you're not allowed to be stupid and your father. Other than that, no one else is allowed to say it. Time in the middle of the board, a hole here on a bank holiday Monday. If you're in the UK, if you're not, you're like, I don't care about your random holiday, Simon. Stick it up your ass. I'm like, jeez, man, geez. you've got to calm stuff down. But look, I've done a few of these videos already. Um, it just started off with the whole V-Shred thing. The video's out there. You can check it out. But I did another one on Will Tennyson because, again, uh, people in the comments were like, oh, Miller, okay, it's cool telling us who not to listen to, but who should we listen to? And now it's developed into a little bit of a mini-series. And I said in the last one, uh, drop names of people, fitness YouTubers. I'll go watch their stuff and we can continue to do it. If you don't make content for your audience, what the hell are you doing? You're just shouting into a wall. And when you go shout into a wall, you get taken away and locked up in an asylum, which is more than fair. Yeah, maybe you become the Joker, which is pretty badass, but you don't want to risk it in case you don't. So surprise, surprise, a person that was in the most was Greg Doucette. This will come as no surprise. It ruins the uh, deliberate, uh, you know, teasing of the title. Like, oh, should you listen to this man? You know I'm a big Greg Doucette fan. We've done videos on the channel before talking about Greg Doucette. I love his no BS attitude. I've never seen him say anything. Uh, that isn't the truth. I'm not talking about opinions here, but when it comes to factual information about lifting weights and getting in shape, every single thing he says is is, is true as far as I'm concerned. And he's, he's always very open to what other people say as well. I know he gets into uh, some... Well, I say he gets into arguments with people, but I always appreciate both sides of the fence. I think you know where he's coming from. And the only time he really sort of, you know, shuts anybody down is when they're coming at him. If you come at someone, they're going to come back at you. That's how it works. But I got the video, in case you've never seen him before, which is the other idea of these uh, these videos. I got one of the videos that I first saw when I was getting into fitness YouTube. Just to, again, this is like a teaser. You should go check out his channel. You should go and subscribe to him because he just gives you good, solid advice. If you are trying to build muscle, you can't be going all out in the gym doing cardio. I don't care if it's hit cardio, fasted, hit cardio, fasted, hard cardio, evening cardio, middle of the night cardio. And we're away. There's that. That's such an easy but good piece of advice to throw out there because let's face it, if you break muscle building or getting in shape right down, you want to build fat. Build fat. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to make that guy. You want to build fat. You want to build muscle or you want to lose fat, right? That's what you want to do. It's a really hard balancing act. And I know I've been there before. Is like, how much cardio should I do? When should I do my cardio? When should I do my weights? Uh, some people lift weights to burn calories, which is absolutely nuts. You should, I mean, that will work teeny tiny because of course you're being active. But if you're using your weightlifting to burn your calories and do your cardio, you're never going to be able to get anywhere near, anywhere near what you want. But that's why I like Greg Doucette so much. Throws it out there, covers all bases, and just says, you know, no matter what you're... Again, what he's going to talk about here later on, and we'll probably jump over this, because again, it's just so supposed to be snippets. But what he goes on to talk about is, you know, in terms of muscle um, uh, muscle building mistakes you want to avoid, is don't kill yourself doing cardio and then try and do weights if you're trying to build muscle, because you're not going to have any energy, and it's the same vice versa. It's all about goals, and it's all about what you want to achieve from the gym. I know I hammer that down all the time, but maybe you're a brand new viewer, and I want to make sure you remember that the gym is for you. Nobody else can actually advise you for 100%, as well as you could arguably advise yourself, because we're all doing different fitness journeys. Like, you know, maybe I want to build muscle. Maybe I want to lose fat. Maybe I just want to feel good. Maybe I want to, you know, shape up my face by dropping some fat. Shape up some face. Does anyone say, oh, uh, let's just move on. Going too long without eating. Whether you're busy, on the road, on the go, there's nothing ready, or you're trying to do some kind of fast because you read it was the cool thing to do, whatever. It is limiting your, your chance to grow. You have basically five opportunities for muscle growth, for muscle protein synthesis in a day. See, this is so good. Because even I do this, I mean, I don't, I don't do it as a uh, fact, but I, I will say I eat two to three hours. And I should probably always caveat that with, but find what works for you, which I do with everything else. But it's the basic stuff like that, that if you're getting into the gym, he just, it just, it just gets it across so well. And he talks about the fad diets with fasting. And look, I know loads of people that are fasting now. I don't want to do it because it sounds horrible and I like to eat food. I'm not talking about intermittent fasting. I'm talking about people that go on genuine, I am going to fast other than water for like two days. I'm like, but what? I mean, again, if you want to do it and you think it works, awesome. But again, from my vantage point, I'm just like, but that sounds rubbish. If someone said, Simon, you can eat healthy food five, six, seven times a day, whatever, or you can eat no food for two days, I'd be like, that one. But even if they say, but there's more benefit here, but I say, what's the benefit? And then it can't be more than two, three percent. I'm like, 
I think I want to go eat some food instead. Because food is awesome. Let's not pretend that deep down we don't love food. And maybe the reason that some people actually get into fitness is because they know if they don't, they're going to end up being a big fat guy. That's me. I'd be a BFG, big fat guy straight away. See, Roald Dahl pretending he was writing about a big friendly giant. No, he was not. It was his big fat guy trying to get out inside. I absolutely would be. I was... um. I visited some people recently and we had some scones, scones, whichever the hell you want to call it. And I had two of them and I honestly could have eaten 48. And that's not an exaggeration. They all laughed at me like, ha, 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 he thinks he could, I could have done. I almost showed him and then realized I don't want to feel how awful I would have done the next day. Neglecting sleep or avoiding sleep aids. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you stay up too late. You get up too early. You don't have a good night's sleep. You're maybe on your phone all night. You don't sleep well. If you don't sleep well, fix the problem. Getting to sleep too. Uh, hopefully I, I remembered to put the right clip in here, but he points at himself when he says I'm on the phone all night. And I also think things like that are really important because you look at someone like Greg Doucette, who's clearly in good shape. Let's not pretend otherwise. Guy's, uh, guy's big and jacked. But even he has foibles, right? Because of course that we all do. And I know when I'm watching other content, when I get a little bit of humility or self-awareness, whatever the word you want to use is, it gives me encouragement and it gives me more confidence, especially with sleep in this environment. My sleep is awful. I know I need to do better. But I think a lot of us on mass will will hold ourselves accountable, which you do need to do, but we'll take that accountability and we'll make ourselves feel guilty. And you shouldn't do that. Like if you eat the 48 scones or you don't get a good night's sleep or you cheat on your diet, as long as you hold yourself to account a little bit, but then make sure you pull it back. And it's just those small things, the little point and things like that. And you may be laughing saying, Son, what a strange thing to, to pull him up on, not pull him up on, but notice, but it means a lot to me. It does. And even if you are, I know some people watch fitness content just to reaffirm what they already know. But that's the whole point. And that's why, let's be honest, a lot of fitness YouTubers will wear vests and look big and jack because it gives them more authority. Of course it does. Of course it does. That's why I'm wearing a Top Gun t-shirt today. I'm subliminally sending you messages. So when you're done with the video, you think, man, Simon's as cool as Tom Cruise. <laughs> Does anybody think Tom Cruise is cool anymore? I like Tom Cruise, the actor. Tom Cruise, the man. Look, he's living his life and good for him. He's incredibly successful, but he's very interesting. Holding back in the gym and lacking effort or intensity. And don't give me some sob story of, I don't know what the definition of intensity is. I think when it comes to Greg Doucette as well, I think in terms of him pushing the idea about training hard in the gym, train hard the last time, I think he's the best at it. I really, really do. And I think he gets it across great. In that clip as well, in case you haven't seen him before, you know, something that, a few people say is they, they don't like being yelled at. <laughs> they think he's too much. I absolutely flip and love it. I think it makes for a good persona. I'm sure a lot of it is character and he's exaggerating it for his YouTube channel as he should do. That's what you tune in for. Um, and also, I just think he's quite a good motivator. Some people need a hug. Some people need to kick up the backside, right? Greg Doucette will kick you up the backside. Although I'm, not, I'm I was 100% sure that I bet if you did his coaching, which you can do, he would work out which one you needed and he would give you either. He wouldn't have all the clients he does otherwise. But um, yeah, the, the fact that, that, you know, train harder than last time, which is a catchphrase of his, whether, you know, whether he meant it to be or not, is the greatest way I've ever heard of trying to describe what to do. Progressive overload, right? Because progressive overload is an intimidating word that you say to people. Like, what does that mean? You say, well, just make sure you do a little bit more than next time. But you can get round all that, as he does, by just saying, train harder than last time. What about the time after that? Train harder than last time. What about my cardio? Train harder than last time. Anybody can get their head around that. And accessible, believable fitness advice is, is, is hard to come by, given how many channels there are and how much bollocks there is out there as well. Right? I've seen far too many videos saying, oh, if you do this specific type of cardio, you'll lose fat in your ass. You're like, you can't spot target fat. It doesn't make any sense. Yes, you can spot target muscle groups because it's a muscle group, but fat doesn't get in your system and then go, oh, today I think I'm going to go live in the tricep. And it funnels its way up to the tricep and sits there like a fucking, it's not a bird in a flipping nest. Only training each body part once a week, doing these bro splits, or like following some Mr. Olympia bodybuilding.com program that you read in a magazine once and follow the training. Oh, Arnold trained this way or some guy in the 80s. Doesn't matter what you've read or think. That's not the best way to train. Train each body part twice a week. Multiple things there that I absolutely love. Talks about, again, don't just read what you read in a magazine or whatever, even on the internet or hear one person's thing. You know, make sure you go out there and try and figure out this stuff and backs it up with science. 
you know, he literally puts a scientific study in his video that talks about training twice a week. And again, I don't mean to go over stuff we've already gone over, but I only used to train once a week until I got a trainer. 2017, I got a trainer to help me build for my bodyboarding show. And, you know, I've been training a good old while since then, at least 15 years, if not more. More. And... You know, it, I didn't know about training twice a week because I totally believe from what I had read that you only train twice a week if you are. I, there's two ways. He mentioned bodybuilders only doing once a week. But everything I had read was, like, oh, you only if you're on sort of crazy drugs do you do, you do twice a week. Otherwise, you're overtrained. So like, I don't overtrain. So, so I didn't do it. Absolute nonsense. As soon as I introduced twice a week, yeah, push, pull, legs, breast, push, pull, legs, blah, blah, boring, boring. I put on so much more size, so much more size. Like, it was almost crazy. It was almost crazy. And I hated myself a little bit because of what I could achieve. And then I was like, that's not how the world works. You know, the best time to do something is 10 years ago or today. And you ain't going back in time because Marty McFly and the doc aren't around right now. Also advice, backs it up with science. Talks again on it with authority. We'll do one more clip, but I think I've made my case. Ego lifting in the gym and being like, I'm putting on muscle, training and just slamming the weights going too fast, going too heavy, wanting to do PRs. Everybody's done it. Me, done it. Everybody. Do you know how many torn pecs I've seen, torn biceps, injured quads from guys who are like, I am, I'm stronger, I'm training hard, I want to progress. Finishes off, I mean, not in that video, we're finishing off with ego lifting, and then once again says that he's done it too. And you know what I'm talking about, you don't know about time under tension, you're doing a bench press and you put on 250 kilograms, you don't even do a rep, you don't even do half a rep, you do ruh. We're talking about rep, you go ruh, and you move about that much, and you get up and you go, oh, I'm such a uh, and everyone's like, that was absolutely rubbish. Yeah, because we've done it because that's what we think it is. It's ego lifting. We think we're in the gym to look the part, right? What well, you're not, you're in there to achieve. You're in there to break muscles down and continue this crazy process that we're on. And the fact that you can see someone like Greg Doucet, who again, professional bodybuilder, uh, doesn't even just say anything. You look at him and go, well, that guy knows what he's doing. He's been there as well. But then he also give you the information and saying, here's what I think you should do. And if you still want to go in there and ego lift, then that's fine. You can. Maybe that's why you enjoy the gym. And I always like to caveat this stuff. If you, I mean, as long as you're not doing it dangerously, then fine. I think it's stupid. But you're allowed to be stupid. Who the hell is is sit around to tell you're not going to be stupid? Your mother. That's it. Your mother can tell you're not allowed to be stupid and your father. Other than that, no one else is allowed to say it. But check him out. Greg Doucette is really, really, really good. He's a massive inspiration for me. Like I'd already done a few fitness videos that had started to do well. I just needed something to push me over the line to make me do it more. And he was the guy. I was like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm enjoying this. Maybe I can offer the same kind of uh, same kind of advice but from a different perspective. Because obviously my experiences are different. And I was really nervous about doing it beforehand. I still get nervous about doing it now. I still have these moments where I, do I actually know what I'm talking about? I like to think I do. A lot of the comments tell me that I don't, but more comments tell me that this stuff is really helpful, which is inspiring and motivating. So it's all about sharing the love. That's how I got here and we'll go back. Uh, again, right in the comments now, who else should I should I talk about? Some people said Matty does fitness. Some people said uh, buff guys. I'll do all of them. I'll do all of them. Once a week, twice a week, well, uh, not twice a week, but twice, uh, once a fortnight. We'll just dip our toe in and we'll have a look at fitness YouTube among the other videos. I like the video, share the video. Again, leave a comment below. Um, hit the bell, ding, ding. I'm getting confused. So you know when videos go up, there'll be another video on screen now. Click it, enjoy the ride here on YouTube. Patreon, merchandise, Twittergram, Instagram. <laughs> Twittergram, what is going on? All the links in the description below. Thank you as always for my support. Thanks for Greg Doucette. I've said that before, I did a video on it, but hey, we'll say it again here. And I'll see you when I see you.